and we are live. Hello, uh, how are Hello. you? Hello, uh, Hello. how are you doing? We're delighted to be here in front of you all. Well, to be here uh, in, in spirit. Uh, we are not live with you here today, but uh, we're thrilled to be here anyway. Uh, my name is Patrick Ryan. I'm a writer and director. I'm based in Dublin, but I'm from uh, Kerry originally, from Khmer. And I'm uh, here with my, my, my good friend, John. Hey, John Hosier Byrne. I'm a writer and director and producer, uh, and I am represented by Arrow Films, and uh, I am from Wicklow and not Kerry. <laughs> Unfortunately. But yeah, so we were going to talk, and I'm sorry if we talk over each other or anything like that at this uh during this, it's purely the vagaries of um, of Zoom communication. But we were planning on, we've been we were very kindly asked to talk to you guys about making music videos and uh, what that entails. Uh, we have sort of a vague idea of how we're going to break that down uh, through uh, uh, the, the brief, the treatment, the uh, collaboration, production and post-production, uh, sort of the five steps that you go through on every music video. Um, and me and Pat have made a lot of music videos between the two of us, I'd say, I don't know, probably 40 between the two of us, something like that. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Something, something around, the, uh, around that sort of area. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just gonna try and talk you through uh, how the creative process that we go through, as well as some more practical aspects to it as well. Absolutely. So what we're we're going to start. We we broken it down to five steps. These are general steps, right? They're not they're not not going to be the same for every project because artists and labels work differently. Sometimes you might work with an independent artist who doesn't have a label, in which case you are talking directly to the artist. Um, but uh, the first uh, step in most in most projects, uh, most music video projects, is a brief, right, John? This is correct. So you you know you can get a brief from numerous sources. Either you're getting it from the artist, which has happened a couple of times. I've reached out to artists that I really really admire, or uh, an artist who maybe doesn't have a label might reach out to you. Uh, you know, might be a mate. You don't know particularly when you're starting out, but more often when you get sort of established, it's going to come from the likes of uh, Creative Commons, which is sort of a, a website that you have to pay. Get membership for but then you can see lots of different briefs uh, and once you get further established and you sort of they put out sorry creative commons and stuff is a place where labels can uh, uh, put various jobs out for tender and you will uh, put in your treatment uh, along with however many other filmmakers prospective uh, filmmakers once you get established though um you know you might have labels contacting with contacting you directly, a and R people contacting you directly uh, to see if you want to throw into a project. Um, the brief itself, sorry, go ahead, Pat. I was just going to say that we we would have done um, between us all, all of those approaches, right? We've had, we've, we would have had both had labels approach us, we would have uh, pitched for jobs and we would have had artists contact us directly as well. So it's, it's not one, and even when you're a little more established, you still get all avenues open to you. It's not going to be a case of uh, you always you always uh, uh, do want a project the same way. There's lots of ways into into making music videos because it's a very open open field, open industry. But either way, what whatever brief you get is usually going to sort of more often than not, not a, not all the time, but more often than not, it's going to sort of follow a couple of the same tropes, right? So, unlike advertising, you know, where you might go if you've where, where I'm trying to crawl my way into at the moment, um, where, you know, if you get a brief for an advertisement, the bulk of the creative work is done long before the project goes out to tender or any filmmaker sees it. Um, in music videos, briefs will very rarely have any sort of guidance with regards uh, the creative aspect to it. Typically, you'll be told whether or not the art, artist should feature. Uh, you'll be told the shooting dates, and you'll be told a budget and the label might wax lyrical about the feel they want for the track and the artist might give a personal statement uh but truthfully um truthfully that's very rarely helpful <laughs> so so more often than not uh um you know the the creative process will sort of be entirely on you the vision for the piece will be entirely on you yeah so when when uh 
if, if we take an example of a project myself and John worked together on, because it's the handiest, um, handiest one to reach for, seeing as we both collaborated equally on it, we, were, we, were, we co-directed it together and produced it together as well, mm -hmm. uh, along with Tommy Fitzgerald, who's, who is a cinematographer um, that we both worked with. Um, the genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He also from Lick Snow's own Terry Tommy yeah. Fitzgerald, um, uh, which was uh, uh, Nina Cry Power, which was uh, Hosier's uh, first um, single off his second album. Um, for that one, we had a very tight turnaround for that, so we kind of the brief stage was very brief, <laughs> right? We almost went straight. It really in. was, yeah. We almost went straight into the. Um, in that case, we 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 had a couple of phone calls with uh, the label and the artists. Um, and went almost moved directly into the second stage from that. So, because of the time pressures of that project, there was no there was no uh, brief as such. Just a couple of discussions, right, John? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was that was an incredibly tight one. In that, I think we went. You'll correct me if I'm wrong, but it was something along the lines of thirteen or fourteen days between the brief and delivery. Like it was. It was unbelievably it's highly regular. Right? <laughs> yeah, help. well, yeah, this is the thing. It's becoming more and more regular, unfortunately, um, as uh, <clears throat> as as budgets narrow, which is something I'll talk about in a little while. Um, but um, yeah, definitely, it's becoming more and more common to to have really really tight turnarounds. But for most projects, that's not the reality. For most if you were to sit down and you were working on a short film, you know, we're looking at something that could be over the source of six months, you know what I mean? Whereas something like this is, is, um, is an incredible quick grab bag of a thing. Advertisements now would also have a very tight turnaround, but you also have the correct re amount of resources and remuneration to make that happen smoothly, which is not always the case with music videos. Mm -hmm. So, that brings us onto the onto the next part of this of this of the process of making music video, with videos, which is my personally my favorite part. Right, it's where you get this, get the song and you are um, you you are basically you do up a document called a treatment. But it, but that's 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 a later part of the process for me. Which I take a lot of time to listen to the song and and decide on the idea. Right, so every director is going to approach this differently. But you need to make a call right at the beginning of the of the of this little process here before you present the idea to the artist and the label. Um, you need to make a call whether you're going to follow the lyrics of the song uh, or not with regards to the treatment, because obviously this, every song is about something. Some are about better things than others, but... Um, not I would disagree with that now, Pat. I would, I would interrupt you there. I don't think every song is about something. <laughs> I, well, okay, yeah, 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 fair enough. I think maybe artists try strive to make them about something. <laughs> sometimes I feel like, and this is this is I don't want to sound cynical at all here, but I do feel like sometimes you are you're presented with a song which may not have um, a, like for me at least, right? I am the sort of sap that whatever project I do, I really want to try and insert some sort of social or political or cultural commentary into it. Right. And sometimes that can be very, very difficult. And sometimes it's difficult to sort of preserve that feeling throughout a process, you know, uh, through the collaboration stage, which we'll talk about later. Um, but yeah, so sometimes when I do hear the lyrics of a song, I am tr I am thinking of how can I ram a, a, something cultural or, or socially significant backwards through these lyrics? You know what I mean? Yeah, totally, totally. I do. Uh, yeah, that, 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 this, this is a good example. That's that's uh, the way John would approach it, um, which is uh, as legitimate as any other way. But it's very different to the way I would approach it, which mm -hmm. is I would, I would disregard the lyrics immediately <laughs> uh, because I I don't see myself. You know, I don't I don't want to I don't want to get into the headspace where you're creating. Even though this is kind of what the job is, I do not want to get into the headspace of, of creating content for a brand or or. or for a client, I don't think that's a good, uh, as a director, I don't think that's a good place to be uh, if you're mm -hmm. looking for the creative. So I tend to treat them, treat each uh, uh, piece of music, each song, like a music cue. And I listen to the song over and over again. And I think, what story do I want to tell if, it, if it's a narrative video, which I, which I do gravitate towards? What story do I want to tell 
that I can set this music to, right? Which is you don't mm. you don't want to tell the artist that because they'll 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 <laughs> they'll look freak out. <laughs> um, yeah. No, but, the artists want to be considered. Yeah, you know, the artists want to be the star of the show. There. Yeah, exactly. What Pat's describing is ultimately quite a rarefied sort of position, and and a very like a. a a, a very integrity filled position to be to be in in this particular medium where where you know you are you are creating a short film effectively yeah exactly that yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. which is which is not the way i would say the majority of music video directors go about it no no but i i, I wouldn't consider you know i was i i started out making short films uh, i've made a feature film i've been developing more features I, I i i'm interested in narratives i'm not really interested in filming uh, musicians prancing around miming to things you know so I, I removed that from it immediately which is probably why you know I, I don't uh, I don't even um, I don't do a lot of music videos actually I, I work with a small like number of artists who who allow me like a lot of freedom to 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 do what I want to do which is uh, maybe not great for the financial bottom line of, of being a music mm. video director, but it is it does provide some integrity for sure no no absolutely but like you know, I, 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 a very good direct friend of mine, a uh, director uh, who will go on, who I, I will remain nameless for the time being, but a fantastic director, um, sent me a photograph of, you know, the little pocket in your key where you put your keys, mm -hmm. the little the little key pocket inside of your jeans pocket. Yep. And she went, what is this for? It's for all the money you make as a music video director. Um, exactly, you know, so, exactly. so you've got to get something out of it, right? If you're if you're working for like two grand, you'd want to get you'd want to at least feel creatively satisfied. Well, this is very true. It's 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 all it's a real tricky thing um, because you also sort of you have to remember there's a balance, and this is something we'll come to when we're talking about collaboration later on. But there is a balance between um, being aware that you know, as a music video from for the client's point of view, not talking about the artists themselves, mm -hmm. but let's imagine any label. What you are what you are being asked to produce is an advertisement for a brand. You know, it's an advertisement by any other name, but just for a very, very specific type of product. Yeah, you know, it's an, it's an advertisement for merch and live ticket shows and for future personal investment in this brand that they're presenting. So while I'm not saying you go out and and do like and and um and think okay how can I make this best brand advertisement I can it is still worth bearing in mind that that is where those labels are coming from and uh, thinking uh, not about how that is going to dictate the flow or direction of your own work but to think about how you are going to navigate those cultural waters, if yeah, that makes sense. That's very true. I don't mean to suggest as well that the relationship should be adversarial <laughs> between you and the artist, even though it usually is between you and the label, but that's just the nature of like creatives, uh, like mm -hmm. heads with, with grown-ups essentially. But I, 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 most, a lot of artists are also creative people and they are open to collaboration. Like if they, if yeah. they, they want and they like your, what you've done in your previous work, you know, they will want to hear your ideas. So it's, it's, not, a, it's not a case of, uh, enforcing your your vision onto like some mm -hmm. artist's song because the song means a lot to them as well it's just finding a medium between both uh mediums basically yeah yeah no perfect example is one of the very few music videos i ever worked on was one for a band called little hours mm -hmm. and i didn't direct that music video um but i did produce it and i rem and i wrote the treatment and i remember and i'm not happy with what it is like i i, I wouldn't show it to you but actually, I wish I hadn't said the bloody name, if I'm honest. Um, but like, I remember going into a meeting with them and being like, yeah, so the concept is about exhaustion. Yeah, we want to try and like, we want to visually represent this incredibly negative, painful emotion on screen for the viewer, make it real tedious. And they were like, yeah, yeah, it sounds great, man. Fucking cool. <laughs> and like, they were really into it. They were really into like taking a big artistic swing, which is not what the label were at all at the time. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, they, they, they bought in entirely because they saw the artistic merit in what I was trying to present. Yeah. Uh, even if, again, I didn't direct it. So, you know, I, whatever. But um, that's, why, that's, that's a good example of why it's important to nail the treatment, right? 
Yeah. You've got to get your intention across in the treatment so that it's easily understood by both the artist and the label who are not versed in creative endeavors. Like, no, no, no. They're numbers people, essentially. So yeah. let's, let's talk about that actually for a second. So in the treatment, you are fundamentally expected to nail down the aesthetic and the tone of the video first and foremost, as well as, and this is almost secondary now, the way most treatments are going, the plot and the methodology itself, right? So um, Sorry, Pat, you I'm wouldn't- gonna bring up you wouldn't, Yeah, I'm gonna bring up uh, two treatments, one of which is um, uh, one from the latest video I did, uh, which is called Everything You Love for an uh, artist called Ring Sligo, and the other one is uh, one of John's uh, for a, a commercial he did for the Wicklow Wolf uh, brand um, of uh, beer. So let me just bring those up. Hold on. There you are. So it's worth noting this is um, that treatment for the uh, for the Wicklow Wolf one was unusual because that was not through an advertising agency. We we don't need to talk about what treatments for that come through advertising agencies or briefs, briefs through advertising agencies are like, but basically the treatment for this was much closer to a music video because they hadn't a. Uh, a set concept or narrative that they were presenting. Like most advertisements, they will come with, this is our idea, how would you shoot this? Whereas most music videos are, this is our song, what can you do? What, what I have no ideas, you think of everything. Um, so this is my, uh, uh, my little treatment for the 30 second ad. Sorry, Pat. No, I was just gonna say, this is, uh, um, you, you can see it on the screen obviously, but this is John's uh, treatment for um, Wicklow World Beer. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of a trap that I fall into far too much, right? And you're actually, you're talking to, I think, you know, it's a pitfall that I continually fall into is writing too much, right? Um, for this particular incident, this this uh, being for a, 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 a brewery rather than a, um, a music video label, it wasn't as important, but for most uh, music videos R record label executives don't want to read at all like I am I have an academic background I taught uh, film in UCD for a good few years before I started making films so a lot of my treatments tend to contain far far too much text and oftentimes will sort of spiral into quite opaque film theory and stuff and in reality photo montages and mood boards are the order of the day like most labels if you were to most labels i look at that have other from other directors contain infinitely more just from the bulk of what makes up the treatment it's mostly images and words are a sort of a small part of it right um so i think that's just something to bear in mind while you're looking at that treatment um i think your treatment really needs to inspire confidence in you as an artist um this may sound super glib, uh, but I know it to be true. The vast, vast majority of record executives, are they're not going to look through your past work. They're probably not even going to look at your showreel. A major decision about who gets to make the video will more often than not be decided purely on the strength of the treatment alone. Um, uh, so, yeah, so, so when they get your, their hands on your treatment, they should feel like... And this is an older treatment, actually, and I redesigned my little treatment template uh, since then because uh, I think this is a bit drab looking. I think it worked perfectly for me at an earlier point in my career, but this isn't a treatment template that I would use again. Um, <laughs> knock it. Yeah, I mean, it did, but like I... Uh, you know, I, I won't... Yeah, I think I think it does need a bit more judge will we say it needs a bit of anyway that's that's my own i also have been spending the last couple of months in lockdown learning graphic design so that may be my bias going in there um but uh yeah that's that's one thing to to bear in mind as for the more creative side of it it's you know um if you, you bear in mind that that a music video for most are directors right for for Okay, so how I'll put this better, actually. Pardon me. From the perspective of the label, from, from the perspective of the artist, a music video is not the same as a short film, right? So unless you're working with an artist who 
you know, you share a specific artistic vision with and who like, like Pat was just talking about someone who buys into what you're trying to uh, uh, present, which is a really rare privilege. What you're making just is an advertisement and just be aware that that is what the people who hold the purse strings will be conceptualizing that music video around. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. Pat, do you have anything you'd like to add at all? I have, I have two documents here from, from the music video. One is, one is a fairly bland treatment, right? So it's one I wrote up uh, um, for, the, uh, for the, both the artist and the crew. It's also important the treatment goes to the crew because you've got to tell them yeah. what to do as well. So let me just see if I can bring this up. Uh, and then the vi like this this doesn't have any visuals on it because uh, I then I left the visual side of it to the production designer who was on the shoot. Mm -hmm. Her name is Lauren, and she did up a visual thing which then went to the artist. Right, so it's it's mm -hmm. he got both. So this is the this is the um, written written word treatment. Um, I, I, I'll I'll send this on as well um, in case you want you want to have a closer look at it. Um, there's not too much to it. There's no point to need to go through it that much. But essentially, this is a narrative video, which is about a girl coming in to identify the effects of her mother who had been murdered, right? So that's the plot of the video. And this just explains um, the idea, the thrust behind it, and goes into some uh, some cues for the production designer and the uh, cinematographer and what the tone of the thing is going to be. And, and you just decide things whether... It, you know, we go, we, we go into, slow, maybe you use slow motion, maybe you use uh, uh, re regular speed cameras. These are creative choices that you want to explore in this in this treatment. But essentially, it's going to get the thrust of the thing across to both the artist and the crew, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a very simple document. Um, and now we have this, which is the thing that Lauren did up. And this has much more, you can see this John too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This has a much more um, visual feel about it, mm -hmm. right? We sent both of these in tandem with the to the to the to the artist, so he can see the, the written intent and the visual intent. Mm -hmm. A lot of images that, that from from there's, you can see Mind Hunter there, the show Mind Hunter, and also mm -hmm. real photos, color palettes, um, textures. And looking at it there, it's staggering how aesthetically and tonally close to this the final piece actually landed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the, yeah, that's what you're kind of aiming for. If, yeah. And it, that, that is one of the reasons why that these are so useful. So, cause everyone can see it and everyone knows what you're, what you're aiming at essentially. So they're, they're important documents as well, not just for the artists, but for the actual crew. Um, yeah. So yeah, this, this is, this is, these are our two things. Well, you have to show us that bit again. Great. Thanks. <laughs> it's all, it's all makeup. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so yeah we've got th th those are just two examples from a recent project and treatments as long as they get the point across you can be you can put anything you want in there what, whatever helps you get the idea across and and, and seal get you the, the job essentially but what all i would say is that while like say in that particular instance you're working with someone who has a profound sort of respect for your work and your artistic vision and stuff whereas i would say just from my own experience you were to send off those two documents to a record label the visual treatment is the one that will get you the job. Yeah, you know totally. what I mean? yeah, 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 totally, totally. I mean, I, 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 I yeah, the, the written one was even more, it's even more important for the crew than the actual people, the, the right. Artists, I think. Right, right, right. Um, so uh, have you any more thoughts on the actual physical act of writing a treatment or conceptualizing an idea? No, I, I, you know what? You said something once actually, uh, I'll quote you directly, Patrick Ryan, right? I can't remember where you said this, but you something that always stuck with me was uh, a music video. Creating a music video is always the challenge of matching the tonality of the song. Mm. Right. Uh, and I think you said that in the context of we were both nominated for an emerging director award for, for Nina cried power, the video that uh, you'll be shown at the end of this little presentation thingy, whatever this is. Um, uh, uh, and yeah, so we were both nominated for that award, but we had to write up a little thing of, you know, what the song was about or whatever. And I believe that's where you wrote that. 
I think that's a really, really astute piece of advice, right? Is you're listening to a track, say for instance, for me, and this is maybe the difference of how we approach it, because for me, the lyrics are a much bigger part of the process. A, a, a perfect example would be uh, t- um, Of Whatever by We Cook Corners that I shot. So that's a band that I just love, right? A band called We Cook Corners from Dublin. If you're not familiar with them, check them out. I do genuinely think they're one of the best bands working in the country today. Um, and uh, I just love them to bits. And they had they had no money. I mean, they had, you know, very, very, like they had no label. They were just, I just really wanted to do it as a passion project for them. I think they had like a grand and a half or something. And I knocked together a very simple music video for them. Um, but, you know, the, the lyrics, they, the, both of those are English teachers um, in their day job. And their lyrics are poetry. I mean, their lyrics are just extraordinary. And I found a great deal of inspiration in the sense of national and nationalistic ennui that was presented in their lyrics. And the 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 music video was very much a direct response to that, right? Mm-hmm. But that's how I work. Whereas Pat is much more about understanding the tone of the song and about how to capitalize and and exacerbate that tone uh, or or maximize its effectiveness does that would you agree with that Pat? Totally. I, I maximize its effect in relation to the story you are telling it's like how you've got to i i sell like selfishly see the music as a tool to mm-hmm. to accompany a story that i want to tell which is you know, it's not, you're not always going to get the luxury of doing that, but it, it's what you, I think it's what you should aim for if you can. Similarly, another one would be the video. I did a video for Mick Flannery, uh, who <clears throat> I just chatted with him a bunch before I um, wrote the treatment. Mm-hmm. And we got on well, but he just, he'd been living in Berlin and he'd realized he hadn't talked to anyone in, like when he was ta- on the phone to me, he realized he hadn't talked to anyone out loud in a week. And I was the first person he talked to because he doesn't speak German or whatever. And um, and and I was just struck by how profoundly isolated he was, you know. And then I listened to the lyrics of the song and it's about him driving around in a car and about how he was contained in this car from his society around him and how isolated he was in that context. So I thought, Jesus, the only possible thing to do is lash him in a glass box on Dame Street on a Saturday night and see how people will interact with them you know the obvious the real route one stuff you know and poor pat um and uh you know but that was that was born directly as well out of the lyrics of the track right about trying to break down um a sort of a, a deconstructivist sort yeah. of take yeah, on yeah. the lyrics and yeah. go from there i mean they're both, they're both equally le- legitimate approaches it's like whatever you whatever however you work best it's like it again allows you to put your own stamp on it as well. Um, as long as as long as you're as long as you're happy with the you know where you are creatively, you can do approach it any way you want. You know? mm-hmm. I also find it's much much easier if you are going a tonal aspect to it. I find that if it's sort of a downer tone, like I'm much happier just in myself writing for something that is has a melancholy air to it rather than something that's upbeat and happy. Yep. Yep. I find that very, very difficult. Yep, but that, but then you're in, then you're into, once you disregard the lyrics, now you're into interesting areas. It's like if it's a downbeat song, and you do something upbeat. You got an interesting counterpoint, vice versa. You yeah, know, yeah. That's, that's that's the place. That's where I'm interested. In. I'm just I'm just basically obsessed with music cues. <laughs> I love music, mm-hmm. and whether you know, and, and it's always trying to attain that that semblance, basically. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's it's uh, it's. Uh, any which way you can, basically. Which is something we kind of did with Nina, right? Like Nina is a very, you know, it's a big brass song. Well, and, well yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly that. So, so the, and we did something quite understated, I think. Yeah, the treatment, the, the treatment for that, which John wrote up. Um, I was listening to the song with Nina, and I was like, "This is, you know, hearing it for the first time is pretty powerful, uh, 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 both lyrically and musically." <laughs> So uh, I was like, well, if I'm having this reaction, then maybe other people will also have this reaction. And, you know, maybe, it, maybe it's interesting to watch people have, 
a reaction to this powerful piece of music and what it stands for. You know with Gas, is I, if I remember correctly, and I may be entirely wrong here, but um, the artist, Andrew, uh, uh, had the idea of, he had this very vague idea about wanting to film projections of um, civil disobedience, effectively which tied very much into the themes of the song that he was presenting of, um, you know, it's a song about protest songs, right? Um, and, uh, uh, and then I suggested, well, if, you know, if you're filming a projection of a three dog of a wall, that's of a two dimensional image. That's a very, that's hugely boring. Okay. So it's a, you know what I mean? It's a great starting point. So yeah. I was like, well, why don't you film the activists who were involved in those in that civil disobedience with the projections falling onto their faces? And that was, we went from there. And then I chatted to Pat about it. And then Pat came up with the coup de grace of, which I don't think the music video would work at all without, uh, which was have them with headphones on listening to the song while these images are being projected onto their faces and follow the reactions, right? Then the focus isn't on the background. It's not on the images. They're set dressing. The actual, the action of the piece exists within their expressions changing as they realize that this song is about them, you know? And that was Pat's concept. And that, to me, is what makes that video work. But well, that's a good example of collaboration working, right? So you take various mm -hmm. ideas and pull them together and you get something that's more than the sum of its parts, like, uh, uh, which my, my original idea was just to play it to, to regular people and see the reaction. Mm -hmm. But it's just, it's just, it multiplies the effect of a thousand times over when you're playing it to the people who live their lives doing this stuff. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that, and that, and that, uh, that treatment was, was, we didn't get much pushback on that, did we? Because Andrew was on board with it, the labor on board with it. That was a pretty- Yeah, they were, they was, it was the treatment there at that stage was fairly a formality. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah. Which is rare, which is a, which is a rare circumstance. Um, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, so that, I think that probably covers the treatment stage of things. We're, we're, uh, we're blitzing through us. We're, we're well past 20 minutes here, John. Oh dear, what uh, time are we at? We're, we've done half an hour. <laughs> Shall we talk briefly about um, about production and post production, and then we'll call it a day? Yeah, yeah, just yeah, quite briefly. Very briefly. Yeah. Um, so, do you want to talk? You, I tell you what, Pat, you take the leads with production. Right? Have you any advice for the young filmmakers of Kerry about? So, so the, the, one of the, one of the first things I do, if you're interested in this process at all, is to pick your favorite song, any song uh, that you like. Um, and do up a one-page treatment for it. Come up with an idea, listen to the song, and think if, I, if, if an artist came to me and said, will you make a video for this? I'm interested in hearing your ideas. What would you do with it? Would you follow the lyrics? Would you try and uh, uh, counterpoint it with a, an idea that is different to the, to the song? Would you be inspired by the music, uh, the, the theme of the, of the lyrics? You know, whatever it would be. I would try and write that out on the page and see what you come up with, you know? It's a good little exercise. Um, Do you know, I would amend that exercise as well, or to, as an alternative exercise, choose a song you hate and, <laughs> and, and do the same thing. Because honestly, more often than not, that's a more realistic depiction of, of, of the process. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, you know, if you get your, get your friends to choose a song for you. And, <laughs> like get that's a their. very good point. Yeah, that's um, all. Person sitting to your left, uh, yeah. you're not you're not sitting in a physical location. Twenty twenty, baby. Um, um, but then, okay, yeah. So then, uh, the production. Um, just very briefly, production is music video is a, a short piece. It's usually you've got a day or two days. Uh, we had two days on the. If you can swing two days, it's it's, it's definitely better. Um, I've been mm -hmm. putting two days recently on the projects that I've done, but we've definitely done stuff in one day as well, John. <laughs> we, or oh, we have, yeah, yeah, yeah. An afternoon. Um, so uh, yeah, th th that's a that's a very that's a production is a is, is a broad um, a, a broad. I, I think m maybe more more interesting is the post production, right? It's when you're editing, mm -hmm. when you're when you're editing uh, a narrative piece, you're 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 in control of how long things last, and you you have control over the tempo and the rhythm. But the music, uh, the song is going to bring you very tight constraints in that regard. It's going to bring you a, a set time limit, three or four minutes, and it's going to dictate the tempo of the piece, uh, which- Quite literally. Yeah, literally, but also, you know, <coughs> narrative has a tempo as well. 
And uh, yeah. if, you're, if you're attuned to that, if you're attuned to both of those things, you can get the best results out of it. So um, yeah. it, when it comes to editing, I usually, I usually have points that I, I've identified in the shoot or the rushes that I know are gonna go in certain places in the song. So I do those first and then, so the timeline looks, if you got a timeline like that, I might put a shot like there and a shot there and a shot there, and they won't change because they're synced to points in the music. And then you build up around those. I think that's what, what, what we did with Nina a, a bit. We, we, we did we, with Nina, we started with the start and the end. We were like- Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, which I do with a lot of music videos, actually, when I'm in the edit is you start with the start and the end. Um, and once you know your definitive starting points and ending points, it's almost like when you um, write the introduction to an essay after you finish the essay, and you go back and you're like, <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean? And then you're running, like, okay, what did I end up saying in this essay? I will say X because now you know what you're going to say, right? Um, so yeah, I find that quite a helpful little tool. Do you know what, guys? If you're if you're starting out, learn to edit. Oh my word, learn to edit because, you know, you could be, the more you learn that you're able to do in post-production yourself without bringing in external people, um, like that is going to be a huge amount of your budgets if you don't. And this yep. is something Pat, Pat knew how to edit early doors, I didn't. Um, and I, I really regret not learning to edit sooner. And I really regret not learning, like, if you can edit, learn After Effects, right? Like, as much as, you know, you're quite lucky in music videos with regards to budgets in that you don't have to worry about sound or you don't have to worry about sound mixing, sure, which, yeah. are, which are two big aspects of um, a production, which for when you're starting out, if there's two things that you can identify immediately that reveal themselves to be amateurish, if there's two giveaways for an amateur production, it's sound quality and sound mixing, right? They just, at an almost subconscious level, you can watch them or listen to them and know that what you're watching is not polished, right? And with music videos, you're quite lucky because you don't have that opportunity. You just fucking slam down, apologies for swearing, you slam down all the footage and you throw the track over it and there you are, right? So you don't have to worry about that. If you can learn how to edit yourself, you'll save yourself a huge amount of money and you'll get a much better sense, sense of the rhythm of what you're looking for, which then on your next project, you, you will bring that information into the production itself. And I, I, on that, on John's point, just to, to wrap, wrap, just to finish on, editing, it's more than saving you time and money, which it will do. And it's also very available to you because you, know, you can do it on a, on a laptop these days. Editing, editing is the language of filmmaking. If you don't know how to edit, um, and then you're really missing a vital skill set in like translating your ideas to, whether it's a music video or a narrative project, whatever it is, taking one shot of something and another shot of something and smacking them together and creating a third idea is the language of any moving mm -hmm. uh, medium, any moving image. That's the Kulashoff effect Pat's describing, if those of you aren't familiar. You know, this old Russian film theorist, a shot of an old silent comic actor, a Russian comic actor, and then a bunch of other things, a pie, a grave, and a woman, I believe, and intercut those two images that had absolutely nothing to do with each other and showed it to a bunch of different audiences and asked what their reaction to each of those shots were. And it was, oh, well, he's clearly... You know, what, what is the Russian comic actor thinking? Oh, he's very hungry. Oh, he's terrified of death. Oh, he really loves that woman. They were the responses that this audience gave. And the idea being that by intercutting two temporally and geographically alienated uh, uh, images, by combining them together in a sequence, you create a third image of meaning in the viewer's mind. Exactly. So uh, Pat, absolutely right there. And, and, also, and, and also this stuff is not natural to us, right? It's not natural. It's, it's a... It's not a language we have instinctively. So it takes years to figure out what works in editing and what doesn't work in editing um, and how you can, like there's some kind of alchemy that happens when you put two shots together sometimes and it just works and there's no real reason why it does work and there's no real reason why something you thought would work suddenly doesn't work when you see it in the editing. So that stuff takes time. So the earlier you get in on that, as John said, the better, um, which would be my, my fi final thought. Learn to yeah. edit. <laughs> I, I, I have one last final thought and then I'll let uh, you all go. Apologies, we're running. I No doubt we've blitzed through our time. 
Um, but but we just so much wisdom. Um, we've also got nothing but time here. Right? We're in lockdown again. You know, this is it, yeah. <laughs> and the the only thing I would say uh, is the last piece of advice I would give is um, find find your crew, find your collaborators, right? Because I cannot tell you how invaluable it's been for me, particularly as someone who came from an academic background. Pat went to film school. Most of the people I work with went to a film school of some description, you know, and learned it at a very practical level. I came from an entirely academic background. I was teaching film. I didn't think I was going to be a filmmaker, and then I was, right? And I think in particular, from my perspective, but I'm sure it's universal, having a tribe of people around you who you can rely on, who you can collaborate with, uh, and whose opinions you can trust has been the single most valuable part of any of my career, effectively, right? Like, you know, and Pat is a prime example of that. Like, I, I worked with Pat on Nina. I, you know, I brought Pat on because I knew he was the most reliable, you know, person who I could go to. He has read any number of scripts I have sent him. And I've read a bunch of yours. We've given he Pat's a great man for an honest note. Holy hell. He'll he'll burn your face off with his honesty. And it's hugely valuable, right? It's hugely valuable because I trust him. Um and there's and and Tommy, you know, Tommy from Lick Snaw is exactly the same. I I have never had a better collaborator, right? And the, this has been hugely, hugely important. And where you are now with the people you are sharing your this Zoom call with the people who are also listening to it, uh, the people who are also starting off, help each other because you know it will it will pay back in dividends. Absolutely, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. That sounds very corny, but genuinely, it's super, super true. I've dug Pat out, and Pat has dug me out. You know what I mean? Totally. So, and th- and that's where the joy of it comes from, isn't it? Collaboration. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're not interested in collaboration, you shouldn't be making anything to do with the uh, film. I don't think. Yeah, write a novel. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> that's that's a perfect place to end it. <laughs> Go write a novel, you guys. Uh, thank you very much for listening to us talk about this. Uh, it's been very enjoyable to um, talk to you a little bit about it. And uh, I think hopefully you're going to get shown um, the video for Nina Cry Power uh, now, which is something me and John collaborated on. Um, other things we mentioned in here is We Cut Corners, John, is that right? You were talking about the video. Yeah, know? We Cut Corners video of whatever, and it was Mick Flannery's That's it, yeah. How High uh, was the other one I did. But to be honest with you, the Nina one will do you. Yeah, and uh, uh, the treatment um, uh, that I mentioned was Everything You Love by Ring Saga, which is on, they're all on YouTube, so if you want to look those up. Uh, Wonderful video. Up that view count for us. <laughs> I'm sorry? Up that view count for us, you know, get a few more, get it taken over. Thank you guys very much. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.